So I've decided to give a video response another try. I had a lot of fun last time, and to my surprise, when I asked nobody attacked the guy that I was debunking, literally nobody attacked the guy that I was debunking, and I want to thank you all for your restraint, but I have to say it again. The guy I'm going to be debunking today has some pretty extreme beliefs, and I swear to God, if anyone goes to his channel and harasses him because of the video that I make, I'm never going to make a video like this ever again. Let's begin. Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Noob Tube Gamer, and I am here to help my fellow console comrades. Let's have a temporary peace agreement for the console wars, just, just for this video. That's all I ask, because both PS4 and Xbox One players have one common goal. And that goal is to debunk the common misconception that PC gaming is better than consoles. Sony and Microsoft fans, we, we both want to expose PC gaming for the inferior platform that truly is, and you know how the old saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay, so this guy's got a really creepy voice. <laughs> so oddly enough, I actually kind of like how he started this, and though I know it's going to go in a bad direction, the thing that I admire is that he seems to want to put a stop to PlayStation gamers and Xbox gamers hating on each other. But the regressive part is that he decided that the way to go about this was to try to force some sort of hate towards PC gamers. Now if you know me, you know I don't care what platform you game on. I just don't want you to be an idiot. It's okay to admit that there are things that you don't know, but to form some sort of hate against a gaming platform? It just amazes me how many people there are out there that feel so strongly about a gaming platform. But let's see what this guy has to say. So that is why I'm here, to help all of you in the fight against PC gaming. Let me ask you all one question. Have you ever watched a YouTube video only to get yourself trapped in the middle of an invasion of PC elitists in the comment section? If you answered yes to this question, then this video is for you because I am here to help you fight back against these entitled PC gamers because this video will teach you how to win a PC versus console debate every single time. Uh, he's starting to get really creepy with that I'm here to help you spiel, but again, I can see where he's coming from. There are PC elitists out there, and I've done my fair share of debunking those idiots as well, but they exist just as console peasants do. There are always extreme cases, and there are always people like myself who want to bring them back down to earth. This is why I'm here. Let's start the video with argument number one, simplicity. This chart compares the necessary steps to play a game once you get your PC or console fresh from the box. Let's see how easy it is to run your games on a console for the first time. Step 1. Plug in console. Step 2. Insert disc or download title. Step 3. Play your game. Now let's look at the steps needed to play a game on the PC. Step 1. Download Steam or any other dig digital distribution service needed to play your game. Step 2. Find a game. Step 3. Make sure your PC can run said game. Step 4. Download game. Installs do take longer on PC than consoles, by the way. What?! Step 5. Play the game. St step 6. Expect crashes. Step 7. Troubleshoot on Steam. Step 8. Get your issue resolved. And step 9. Try again. <laughs> oh my god! Wow! This is actually kind of cool. So, I'm not only debunking a video here, but he's also given me this unique privilege to debunk the usual quotes that I deal with almost every time I make this series. Okay, so here's the thing. You can mix and match these depending on which side you're on. This displays a bias here. Let me show you what I mean. See? This doesn't prove anything. It just shows that someone on the internet was being hateful. But there was one that got me. Installs take longer on PC. <laughs> I love this. And you know it's got to be true. No matter what internet connection you have, if you're a PC gamer, you're going to have slower installs. And I love that he said installs. Installs, not downloads. Installs. <laughs> Do you know what an SSD is? Do you know that we have access to SSDs? Now, I'm sure that many PC gamers watching this video will deny the fact that PC games crash on a frequent basis. Yeah, they will deny that, because they don't. Do you want an example? I've literally only had two games crash when I first tried to start them, and the only game that crashes all the time for me is Gary's Mod, but that's mostly because of me adding too many assets into the game. However, when I was on Xbox, games crash pretty much the same exact amount. 
It happens. Which is why I have evidence. That's right. As you can see here, I conducted three different Google searches in order to determine the amount of reported game crashes on each respective platform. I concluded that the PC has nearly 30 million reported game crashes, while the PS4 and Xbox One have a combined total of over 8 million game crashes reported. Therefore, you are approximately 3.46 times more likely to experience game crashes on the PC than the PS4 and Xbox One combined. Do you want to know why that is? See, the thing about PC gaming is that anyone can make games for others to play. Indie titles are ran on engines that are sometimes not built to run the games as well as these developers hope. Now that's not to say that AAA games never crash, but when you have a platform that has more games than every console combined, of course you're going to experience more crashes. My neighbor has more grass in his yard than I do. Is it not surprising that my neighbor uses more water? But now it's time to move on to argument number two, affordability. Now, don't worry, this argument will be further elaborated later on in the video, but for now, I will just state that the Xbox One costs $350 and the PlayStation 4 costs $400. It should be noted that as of the recording of this video, you can buy the PS4 and Xbox One bundled with a game, which even further increases the value of the console. You cannot find a powerful gaming PC under $350, but like I said, don't worry, I will further elaborate on this point deeper into the video. I have proven time and time before that you can in fact build a PC for three to $400 and it will easily outperform a console. My viewers send me budget builds all the time around that price and the specs are generations above what's inside this generation's consoles. Man, there's nothing wrong with gaming on console at all, but the idea that consoles are cheaper for a better experience, it's been overkilled and it's dead wrong. Argument three better social experience on consoles. Xbox Live and PSN are built for social interaction. Services such as Steam and Origin are less social. Let's take a quick look at some of the best features PSN and Xbox Live have to offer. As you can see, PSN has a wide array of features that make it more social platform than Steam. For example, the PS4 is cross-game party chat, a feature that Steam does not have. In order to communicate with others while playing different games, you must open another program such as Uvu, Skype, or any other over-the-internet calling service. These programs running along with your games can lead to a major dip in performance. Also, the PS4 is a better interface meant for social interaction, as well as the Xbox One. Both the PS4 and Xbox One offer an integrated game recorder. Again, the PC, on the other hand, requires separate programs in order to record gameplay, such as Fraps. Additionally, the Xbox One and PS4 have Twitch live streaming integrated as well. Again, you need separate game recording software in order to live stream PC games, such as FF Split. Do I need to say any more on this? It's irrefutable that consoles are more social than PC. Ooh, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. And I gotta say that I love how you found the most extreme pictures you could find on Google and then use them for your research. To begin, you said that Steam is a less social platform because it does not allow you to talk to your friends as you play games. The issue with this is that it's absolutely wrong. Steam has an in-app feature where you can call anyone in your friends list that you want while you play. You don't in fact have to open up other programs. However, I always do because it's easier. It offers me more options and does not impact my game's performance at all. See, the thing is, unlike you, I don't have a weak processor. And even if I did, Apps even as resource heavy as Skype don't impact your games almost at all. It's rare if they ever do. So that's a blatant lie. You then said that the PS4 and the Xbox One offer game recording. And as great as that is, you can only record 5 minutes of gameplay at a time with the Xbox and only 15 minutes with the PlayStation 4. Whereas we have programs that are in fact free, like Shadowplay, that allow us to record our games as long as we choose to. We also get to decide what programs we wish to use, and you're not limited or dictated by anything. After this, you said that consoles have an integrated streaming service that allows you to stream to Twitch. What you did not mention is that this is restricted as well in the stream quality. Now look, if you're going to mention pros, you have to be thorough. Otherwise, some jerk like me is going to say something. Now I'm going to say this. When I was on Xbox, I was not as social as a gamer. When I switched to PC, I instantly gained a ton of internet friends and I gamed with them all the time. Now, why was it that on PC, I was able to be more social, whereas on console, I was not? Oh, that's right. 
that $50 a year paywall that Xbox tried to force at me. See, I came from a very poor family. I could not afford Xbox Live. Try to tell me one more time that consoles are hell-bent on being social. Because you're wrong. They're hell-bent on making money. If you have money, then sure. But on PC, gaming with your friends is free. You don't have to pay anybody to make yourself some friends. Argument number four. Exclusives. Whether you're a PC or a console gamer, I will ask you all the same question. How often do your friends in real life talk about how much they want a game that's exclusive to a console they do not own? For example, someone you know who owns an Xbox One really wants to get their hands on Bloodborne. Or, maybe another person you know who's on the PS4 wants to play Halo. Think about the amount of times you've encountered such an instance, and then compare it to how often your friends talk about a game that's exclusive to PC. You can't? My point exactly. Ugh. Now I've hit an impasse. See, I don't want to say the same old thing that I always say when this idiotic statement is made, but I don't want to just ignore it as well. So let me say this. The statement itself is stupid because it's subjective. You may say, oh look, God of War. But I might say, oh hey look, Crisis. And saying you prefer one game over another is why this is idiotic. But you're right. It's unfortunate that we PC gamers will never in any lifetime get to play The Last of Us and Uncharted and Red Dead Redemption and Halo 3. God, it really does suck. Did you know that we have emulation? Yeah, we have emulation, emulation. Argument number five, impact on the gaming industry. Now, without consoles, gaming wouldn't exist today, but without PC, gaming would still exist. <laughs> oh my god! You just debunked yourself! Did you guys see that just now? Okay, I'm gonna let him finish. I'll get into it in a second. Oh my god! Let me just go over a few innovations that were made possible by consoles. First, the Atari 2600 is the reason why gaming is a part of current mainstream society. The Nintendo Entertainment System, whether I like to admit it or not, is the reason why gaming still exists today. Think about it. They got us out of the crash of 1983. And of course, Sony, with their analog, innovated controllers. Basically, all-around consoles have innovated the gaming industry, and not too many innovations, if any at all, have occurred on the PC. Okay, so get this, guys. Gaming would still exist if PCs didn't, but without consoles, gaming wouldn't exist. Does anyone want to guess why this is the most ignorant statement in existence? There are two reasons. Computers were developed and used far before consoles existed. Consoles only exist because computers innovated the technology, so scratch that whole innovation thing. But this is where it gets good. Every game ever made in the history of man was developed on a computer. If computers didn't exist, gaming would not exist. And I love how you say that PC brought no innovation. Do you know about Doom, Half-Life, Half-Life 2? Do you know what virtual reality is? Do you know what a graphics card is? Did you know that your Xbox and PS4 don't even technically have a graphics card? They're running a chip setup similar to how laptops integrated graphics work. They're just a bit more powerful. The only innovation that I've ever seen from consoles is on the side of Nintendo, and even they are some of the furthest behind the technology curve. Now let's move on to the second half of this video, the counter arguments. Basically I take a look at five common arguments used by PC gamers and I basically refute them. So I'm going to start with argument number one. PC gaming is better because consoles and console games are from PCs, meaning of course you need a PC in order to develop the PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One because they use parts from a PC. They're basically conventional PCs, right? And obviously console games are programmed on PCs. But here's a problem with that analogy. Chocolate milk came from milk. Does that mean that milk is superior than chocolate milk? Are hamburgers superior to cheeseburgers? And is basically every food product known to man inferior to wheat? Think about it. That makes absolutely no sense. It really doesn't matter where the consoles came from. If it's superior than PC, then that's all that really matters. If it came from PC, then it makes absolutely no sense to make a bold comparison like that. You have the audacity to say bold comparison? <laughs> okay, I would love for you to show me what kind of specs are in your PS4 right now and tell me that they're above the technological curve. I've done my research on this many times, my friend. The PS4 is comparable to the R7750. 
That's a card from 2012. Do you understand that we're in the 10 series when it comes to Nvidia and the 4 series when it comes to AMD? I don't think you know how powerful today's hardware actually is if you seriously think this generation's consoles are top tier. I can build a computer for $380 that matches the specs of the PS4. I've done it before, and the PC I built for $380 was still a bit more powerful. Argument number two. PC gaming is a platform that gives gamers more freedom. I'm going to start off by saying, if you're a PC gamer who avidly uses Steam, but you also criticized Microsoft for their DRM policies on the Xbox One that were later reversed, but still when they were first announced back in E3 2013, then you're a hypocrite because Steam basically is centered around DRM and has the exact same policies that the Xbox One introduced in 2013, which of course were later reversed, but still I'm using it as a comparison. There's one thing that actually proves that consoles actually have more freedom than the PC in terms of gaming, which is the physical market, because you can actually receive a return for something that you sold. As in, you can sell a game and you can get money back from it. You cannot get money back from a digital product. It's just impossible. You can't resell something digital because it has no value. But the only thing PC really gives freedom for you to do is freedom to pirate. And that just hurts the developer and the publisher and basically anybody who's not you. It, piracy sucks and it happens more on PC than it does on console. Yeah, you're right. See, on consoles, I have the freedom to mod my games. I can play online with my friends for free. I have the freedom to change my graphics settings. I have dedicated servers on consoles so I can choose who I want to game with and in what region. I have backwards compatibility on consoles, meaning all those Zelda games I used to play, all those Sega games, the old Xbox and PlayStation games, they're all readily available to me on my console. I can upgrade my hardware anytime I want. I can use any controller I want to use. I have cheaper games on consoles and higher frame rates, which is yet another freedom. Oh wait, yeah almost none of those things, huh? Only just now are a tiny portion of these things coming to the next generation of consoles, and I'm very happy that you guys are catching up. You should have more options to you as a gamer, but to say that you have more right now, it's ignorant. I will agree though that selling your games is something that you do have that we don't, and I've said it before. Because we can sell our games though, they're far cheaper, but you're right. Did you know, however, that selling your games goes against the policies and the EULA agreement that you signed when you bought your console? Yeah. Selling games is wrong, and it hurts the industry just as much as piracy. Also, there are pirates on consoles. A lot of PC pirates actually do it to test the game and see if they want to buy it. I think that putting an end to this, I'm always right and this is factual thing could do you well, because a lot of your points seem to come from emotional attachment instead of non-biased logic. And if you were to take a step back and let someone show you, you might be surprised at the world that PC gaming offers you. It's not something that we're locking you out of. You can join anytime you like, and we welcome you. I think it's about time you give it a shot and put an end to all these misconceptions. Argument number three. You can buy a powerful gaming PC that's cheaper than a new console. Uh, no. According to PCGamer.com, which of course is the largest publication or any really gaming site that's dedicated to PC gaming, PCGamer.com states that in order to have a budget PC that can actually last a few years instead of being outdated after a few months or a year, you need to pay close to $700, which of course is a lot more expensive than a PS4 or an Xbox One. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, you, you cannot spend less than $350 to have a PC that is just as powerful as a new console or more powerful. You cannot spend less than $350. It, it's just, can't, you can't. <laughs> you can look this up. There are many builds that are $200 to $400 that actually outperform consoles. Seriously, YouTube it. The cool thing about PC is as our hardware gets better, the older hardware gets cheaper. And with that, you can build a really, really nice PC for the same price as a console. As of this date, I've done it five times. All gaming PCs under $400 and are running every game you throw at it at at least 1080p, 60fps, medium or high settings. 
The sad thing is that you don't even have the capability to prove me wrong. I could be lying to you right now, and I could be telling you the absolute truth, but you didn't do any research on this, so no matter what, all of this is going to brush right off you. And it's sad, because you seem like a pretty dedicated gamer. You have the potential to make some pretty good points about... something. Alright, so argument number four. PC gaming is a better value than console gaming. This is a bit relatable to the last point I made, but it's a bit different, right? So basically, people mainly say that PC gaming is a better value because although you spend a lot of money up front, you save a lot of money from Steam sales and everything, right? Well, let me start off by saying that Steam accounts are not free. Steam is not a free service. You have to spend at least $5 in order to have a full account. Now, I can say that having to spend 5 bucks to have an account on Steam is kind of dumb, but they did it to ward off hackers and thieves. However, what gamer in history is ever going to jump onto Steam and never spend any money? Steam is a DRM. You buy games from it. What a dumb thing to gripe about. Also, you failed to mention that you aren't paying for a Steam account. All you have to do is buy a game. Once you buy enough games that accumulate to $5... Little side note, by the way. That took my friend almost two days because he first got Steam during a Steam sale. <laughs> Only then will you have an activated account. Yes, PlayStation Plus costs $50 a year, and Xbox Live Gold does cost $60 a year, but you do get free games every month that you can keep in your library forever. Steam, on the other hand, you, you do have free weekends, but you're only able to access those games for two or three days. Except for the fact that games go free to own on Steam all the time. Amnesia was free a few months ago, and those who got it get to keep it forever. Not to mention, Origin gives games away all the time for free. Need for Speed Most Wanted went free. Same with Nox, Battlefield 1942, all of the DLC to Battlefield 4. Same with Uplay. Uplay's been giving away games all year. Rayman Origins, Prince of Persia, Splinter Cell, and don't forget emulators. Every game on almost every past console, mobile or otherwise, they're free to us. But, like you said before, every single PC gamer without a doubt is a pirate. So why would it matter at all if DRMs give games away or not? You seem to be contradicting yourself here, buddy. Also... Multi-platform games are always better on the console, such as Batman Arkham Knight, Watch Dogs, and of course, The Witcher 3. Batman Arkham Knight, Watch Dogs, and The Witcher 3 to date run better on PC. Check yourself! And argument number five, PC gaming is superior because it has better graphics. Now, this is definitely the most used uh, claim, right, that PC gamers like to say. And honestly, it cannot be refuted, directly at least, right? Because PC gaming d does offer better graphics. Whoa, I was actually going to say that this kid is pretty much hopeless, but it looks as though he does have some objectivity in him. Maybe he can be helped. I'm sorry I gave up on you when I did. I should have had more faith in you, my friend. Please continue. However, crap. what I can use to refute it is that most PC gamers do not have PCs that are actually utilizing the better graphics, as shown by a Steam survey. So, therefore, it really doesn't matter if it has better graphics when most PC gamers don't use the better graphics. Sure, it sells. The new PC games, they sell, but not as much as... It would if more people actually had it. So after a quick Google search, I found the article that he was talking about, and there was no factual evidence nor sources in the article to prove it true. However, let's say it was true. The benefit is not that PC gamers have better graphics. Graphics are just the icing on the cake for us. The benefit is that we have the ability, the option. We aren't trapped or stuck or dictated to a certain resolution or graphical setting like consoles are. We have more options, as you generously stated earlier. And this is the real benefit to this platform. You decide. So, yeah, console wins this thing. You know, it's, it's not a debate at all. It's basically, it's pretty much irrefutable for the most part. Consoles are better than PCs. And any console gamers out there that's sick and tired of getting pushed around by those PC elitists, use this video to counter everything they say and, of course, to give your own arguments on why consoles are better. 
So yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And of course, I'll see you guys later. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and that ending was terrible. So yeah, it seems that this wasn't a debate at all. You can't even refute these as they were my own opinions gathered from cancerous Google images that I decided I wanted to be fact. Look, you were right about one thing. This wasn't a debate at all. I was supposed to walk away with the knowledge in hand to defeat any PC elitist that told me that I was a peasant. And all this video would do is get me laughed at for being ignorant and holding on to my opinions as though they were fact. I'm gonna say this. You seem closed-minded. I don't even think you would have an actual debate, even if someone offered, but for the hell of it, I'm offering. If you want to have a real debate, come prove me wrong. But I'm gonna warn you right now. If you say something that I know isn't true, I'm not gonna be polite. I'm willing to bet you don't even know the specs inside your own consoles. And the funny thing is, I do. I know the specs of the PS4 and the Xbox One by heart. I know the specs of my system by heart because I love technology. There isn't a component that exists that I don't know about. And there is not one thing about these gaming platforms that you know that I won't. I build computers for a living. I know what I'm talking about here. And hearing this regressive misinformation, it just hurts. There's nothing wrong with doing research. Open your eyes, broaden your mind, seriously. You may come to realize that you've been missing out on something that you love all because of your own ignorant hate. If you ever decide to give PC gaming a try, let us know. We welcome you.